Hey everybody, my name is Allison Harrell from the Fort Bend Museum, and today I'm gonna to tell you about my favorite woman in Texas history and in Fort Bend history, Jane Long. So um, at the very end of this video, we're gonna go into a few myths and different fun facts about her, but um, first let's go over who she was and what she did. So Jane Wilkinson was born July 23rd, 1798 uh, in Maryland. She was the 10th child born to her parents, and the year after she was born, her father died and her mother moved the entire family down to Mississippi territory. Now, when Jane was about 15, her mother died. And that was in 1813. So she moved in with one of her sisters. Um, her sister had married a man named Calvitt, so she moved in with the Calvitts and Barbara was her sister. And they just became her legal guardians for a while as she finished going to school and doing different things like that. Now, it was during this time when she was living with the Calvitts that she met a young, dashing man named James Long, and she fell in love, and they got married in 1815. Uh, and this was when Jane was around 17, and James Long was in his 20s, so a little bit scandalous there. James and Jane Long lived in the Mississippi area for the next four years, um, and that's when they had their first daughter, and he practiced medicine, he experimented with plantation living, and um, also set up a business in Natchez. So he's just sort of finding his footing, and they were finding their footing as a family. Now, um, James Long, as you might have previously known, was a filibuster, and so he decided to free Texas, and so he headed out to Nacogdoches to free it from Spain in 1819. So when James Long left for Nacogdoches, his wife Jane was incredibly pregnant with their second daughter. And so she stayed behind for a while. And then after she gave birth, she soon followed James to Texas. Now she didn't bring the kids with her. And so by the time she got to Nacogdoches was around the time that the Spanish soldiers were being sent to quell this uprising. So she ended up fleeing back into the United States and she met up with her husband at the Sabine River because he had been somewhere else when this was happening. So they ended up meeting up at the river and then heading back to um, sort of where their family lived in uh, Mississippi. So um, in 1820 is when James Long started his second um, foray into Texas. And so he brought his wife to Bolivar Point in Texas where they built their fort um, and where John Lafitte was just right across the bay from them. And it was there, um, they didn't actually stay there for the entire time before he set out into San Antonio. Jane actually went back to the United States to pick up their kids and bring them back to this fort. And then she got um, delayed by different things. So she ends up getting back to the fort. She's again, heavily pregnant. And uh, James then leaves to go and free San Antonio from Spanish rule in 1821. So that leaves Jane at this fort. Now, when James Long left, he took all the soldiers with him, but he didn't take like the women, children, and families. And so there was a bunch of support around this fort right when they were leaving. And it was like, okay, this will work out. And then little by little, every family that was there, every other person that was at the fort decided, you know what, I'm not gonna wait any longer. And they left. So by December, it was just Jane, her young daughter, and a 12 year old enslaved girl named Kian. So, and also Jane is heavily pregnant. On December 21st, 1821, Jane gives birth and she's completely alone at this fort. And this is one of the hardest winters that she'd ever seen in Texas. And it was an incredibly harsh winter by any standards because it was so cold. The bay at Bolivar Point froze solid. You could walk across it. So part of the benefit of being at Bolivar is the fact that it was a peninsula. So it was protected by um, water on most sides so that you really couldn't get attacked without knowing what was happening or knowing that something was coming. So here is Jane. She's a five-year-old daughter. She's a 12-year-old enslaved girl with her and she's a newborn. And after she's given birth, she then notices that the Karankwa Indians who are known for being very fierce and very terrifying in appearance are walking across the bay towards her. So she does what any reasonable woman would be expected to do. She uh, runs her red petticoat up the flagpole. She dresses the 12 year old as a soldier and has her march in front of the fort to indicate people are there. And she fires a cannon. Now she wasn't firing at the Native Americans. She was just trying to scare them away and it worked. So they turned right back around and walked right back across the bay and left her alone. So, um, she continued to stay at this fort because she was waiting for her husband. She told him she would wait there for him and she did. 
What she didn't know is that he had been killed. So she waited for a long time. And actually, Stephen F. Austin's first colonist started going by the fort and speaking to her. And they were like, you can, why don't you come with us? Why don't you leave here? This isn't good for you. You're running out of food. You have small children. You shouldn't stay here. And she said, no, no, I'm waiting for my husband. Um, eventually, uh, a couple came by that she knew. And so she actually went with them. She did leave the fort finally. And it was after she left the fort that she found out her husband had been killed. So she did what any reasonable widow would do and went straight to the government in San Antonio to a man who had uh, known her husband and been a former like helper to him. They had some sort of deal worked out. She went to him and she said, you got my husband killed, give me something in return. And she waited for 10 months and nothing came of that. So she ended up going back to her sister's place. Her sister had now moved to Louisiana, Alexandria, Louisiana. So she goes back to her sister's place. They stay there for a while. And then in 1828, she actually gets her own league and her own labor and she moves to Texas. Now you might be wondering, where was that league? Where was that labor? So the labor was in Waller County and the league was actually in Fort Bend County. And if you ever wondered, hmm, I wonder what land I'm standing on right now. If you're standing in Richmond, there's a divide down the middle of Richmond. It's like Highway 90, let's say. So if you're um, on one side of Highway 90, where the historic courthouse is, that side of 90 is Jane Long's land. The other side of 90, where Morton Street is, that belongs to William Morton. So Jane Long ran a boarding house in San Felipe, which is where a lot of people gathered. She ended up opening a second boarding house in Richmond. And um, she had a plantation outside of town. She lived there. Her uh, daughter married someone with the last name of Winston. So she had grandchildren with the name of Winston. And um, they did different things in the town, built different things. And she ended up living until 1880 when she finally died. So that is our brief synopsis of the life and times of Jane Long. Let's get into some fun facts and myths. So number one, Jane Long is considered the mother of Texas because it said that that baby she gave birth to on December 21st, 1821 was the first English speaking or Anglo baby in Texas, which um, it's not true. We know it's not true. There are records that indicate it's not true, but we don't care. <laughs> we are keeping her as the mother of Texas. Um, maybe not because of the baby she gave birth to, but maybe because of another reason. So that boarding house that she owned in San Felipe and she ran, that became a meeting point for a lot of revolutionaries in Texas. So anytime someone new came into town or there was something big going on, it would happen at the boarding house. And actually, when Stephen F. Austin was released from jail in Mexico City, he'd been jailed for 18 months right before the Texas Revolution. Right when he got back to town, he went to that boarding house and they threw him a giant party. So um, her boarding house became a location that became important to the Texas Revolution and those ideas being spread. And so we're going to keep the mother of Texas, but not because of the baby she gave birth to. So a lot of people think that the Longsmith Cottage was lived in by Jane Long, but that's not true. So as much as I love the Longsmith Cottage, this was not built by Jane Long. Jane Long did not live here. Her grandson built the house to be a rental property or a house to sell so that they could um, help with the housing crisis in Richmond at the time. No one had homes, they all wanted to live here, so he built a home. Now, um, this house is not lived in by Jane Long. She never owned it. We do keep the artifacts that we have from Jane Long in this house. So that piano you see behind me, that was Jane Long's. The portrait you see over the fireplace, that's Jane Long's older sister, Barbara Calvitt. So we keep her stuff here, but it was not her home. So here is Jane Long's tombstone. You can see it has this really cool urn covered in ivy at the top. It is a long obelisk. Um, it has her information on the front. So Mrs. James Jane B. Long. And then if you actually walk around it on the back is the information for her husband. So my last little tidbit about Jane Long is both a fun fact and potentially a myth. When I was doing the research for this video, I found that I can't really corroborate this story from different sources, but I have heard it a number of times. So I'm just gonna consider it a fact, but it might totally be a myth. So um, the, the tidbit is the fact that Jane Long was pursued by a number of different men over the years, and she denied all of them. 
but my favorite of her pursuers was none other than Maribel B. Lamar. So um, the reason I brought you here today is because here is Jane Long's tomb. Here is her daughter's gravestone. And then over there, the next obelisk over is Maribel B. Lamar. So even though she denied him twice, even though he uh, proposed, even though he wrote her poetry, uh, they are actually buried in relative proximity to each other. And I kind of love it dearly. So that's the story of Jane Long. She's one of my favorite female characters from Texas history, and I hope she becomes yours too. See you next time.